loaded on uh, Carmen so those of you who have web access you can download it from Carmen okay so we were talking about time delays and we were talking about uh, uh, oil wells deep deep sea oil wells and uh, in the current situation of climate change it's probably not a good example to give in the classroom but uh, that's what we have so delays are very uh, usual in many control systems, particularly where it involves communication or it involves con uh, action at a place or, or sensing at a place which is separate, geographically different from the point where the actuation is actually getting applied onto the system. So when you have such a situation, you want to uh, design a controller uh, so gs would be e raised to minus st uh, some g tilde s so it shows that there is some delay of t time steps and the goal is to design a controller such that the feedback system is stable uh, even with the delay okay and even though I'm showing the delay in the control loop, you could have delay in the observation loop as well, in the feedback loop as well. Let me. So you could have a situation where you have a um, delay in the feedback loop as well as a delay in the feed forward loop. Let me put an observation transfer function as well. Okay. H tilde. Okay. So, in this particular situation, uh, the overall transfer function y of s over r of s is given by gcg over 1 plus gcgh. So that's equal to GC G tilde e raised to minus ST1 over 1 plus GC G tilde H tilde Okay. So when we are trying to design controller, we are interested in the Nyquist plot or the Bode plot or the root locus of this particular system. G tilde, H tilde, E raised to minus S T1 plus T2. I want to give it a name. What should I pick? R? K. No. K. K? No. K is gain. Uh, G is used. Uh, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. L, L. Yeah, I can use L. L of S. Yeah, I think L of S looks good. So let's just pick that. So when you're designing GC and you want to understand the stability properties of the closed loop controller that you're going to design, you have to actually draw the Bode plot or the Nyquist plot or the root locus for L of S, okay? Now let's try and understand what happens to the Bode plot for L of S, okay? We'll not talk about root locus because root locus requires us to know the position of poles and zeros and it's not clear what the position of poles and zeros of e raised to minus st is, okay? 
So we'll talk about payday approximation towards the end of the class. But right now, let's just talk about the body plot of L of S. So let's consider the L j omega. Let me call t1 plus t2 equals to t. So L of j omega is g tilde of j omega h tilde of j omega e raised to minus j omega t. So what do we plot in Bode plot? We plot the 20 log absolute value of L and then angle of L. So let's look at the absolute value of L. It's absolute value of G tilde, absolute value of H tilde. What's the absolute value of E raised to minus J omega T? One. So it turns out that the absolute value is the same as absolute value of G tilde H tilde. Okay, because this term doesn't add to the magnitude of the Lj omega. Let's look at the angle of Lj omega. It's angle of G tilde, angle of H tilde. plus what's the angle of e raised to minus j omega t sorry minus omega t Okay, so let's see why. So I'll have minus omega t here. So e raised to j omega t, so e raised to j theta is cos theta plus j sin theta and theta is the phase. So angle of e raised to j theta is equal to theta. So that's why it should be minus omega t uh, because you have a minus sign here and then omega t. So that becomes the phase and the Absolute value is equal to cos square theta plus sine square theta, so that's equal to 1. So the, the gain, the magnitude doesn't change, but the phase changes uh, significantly uh, for higher frequencies. So if omega is large, then omega t is of course large and the phase has actually changed quite a bit. But nonetheless, the phase decreases, okay? So whatever is the initial phase you started with, because of the delays, the phase of the system has now reduced uh, for all values of omega. So this implies phase reduced for all, for all frequencies.
okay so let's look at a body plot on the other side Um, so this is 20 log absolute value of Lj omega and then the phase is angle Lj omega. So this was your a magnitude plot for a second order system. So let's just take that as an example. Very unfortunate, somebody stole the color chalks. <laughs> I have to use white chalk for uh, for the next illustration. So the uh, let's say the original phase was started at zero degree, went all the way to 180 degrees. So something like this. This is the original phase for G multiplied by H. So this is angle G tilde H tilde. So let's look at the phase of Lj omega. So that's angle of G tilde multiplied by H tilde minus omega t. So So this is the phase of Lj omega. So this is angle of Lj omega. Okay, so let's think about the gain margin for this original system which did not have any delay and the new system which has a delay in the loop. So in the original system, uh, the gain margin is determined by looking at where the phase intersects with minus, minus 180 degree line. So it intersects at infinity and at infinity you check how much gain can I increase the system by without really uh, without really making the system unstable? So that's given by this is the zero dB line. So you look at uh, the point at which uh, the phase intersects with 180 degree line and look at this particular uh, difference, and that's your gain margin. And for this second order system, the gain margin was, is, is equal to infinity. Gain margin, this is for G tilde, H tilde.
Okay, so for the original system, the gain margin was infinite dB. How did I find that out? So I saw that it intersects at infinity, omega equals infinity, and this is of course infinity at that particular location, so gain margin is infinity. What about the phase margin? So the phase margin is how much phase, uh, so you look at omega c where the, uh, you look at omega c where the, the cutoff frequency where it intersects with 0 dB line, so in this case of course it starts with 0 dB right here. So the phase margin is almost of the order of 180 degrees. So the 0 dB line, it intersects right here and at here, the I can reduce the phase by 180 degrees, so this is equal to the phase margin for the original system. So phase margin of G tilde, H tilde. So let me write it here, the gain margin of g tilde h tilde equals to infinite dB, the phase margin of g tilde h tilde is actually uh, 180 degrees. Okay, now we want to understand the gain margin and phase margin of the system with delay. Let's look at the gain margin. So where does it intersect the 180 degree line? It intersects right here. This little thing that you see here, that's the gain margin. Okay, and the phase margin still remains 180 degrees. gain margin of g tilde h tilde e raised to minus st, this is small, the phase margin is equal to e still 180 degrees. Okay, so in other words, the closed loop system is very close to instability in this particular situation because of very small gain margin, okay? So remember, we look at the gain margin of the, we, we look at the body plot of the open loop system and then we identify what the gain margin is. If the gain margin is large, phase margin is large, closed loop system will be very close, very stable. If the gain margin is small, phase margin is small, the closed loop system would be close to instability region. If it is negative, either the gain margin is negative or the phase margin is negative, your closed loop system is unstable. It's an undesirable outcome. And whenever you have unstable closed loop system, you have to design an appropriate controller to make sure that uh, it's stable. But what I want to illustrate here through this example is delays can lead to instability in a system. Even if, so let's assume that you have ignored the delay completely and you design some beautiful controller and it satisfies all the gain margin and phase margin requirements. If you have delay which was unmodeled, you did not model it, you did not think about it, you did not really care about it, if there was delay, you put the system, you put the controller on an actual system and then you start running it. Because of the delays, you will see an unstable behavior, okay? So it's very important, if your system has delays, you really have to be aware of it and you need to ensure that your control design process incorporates that delay explicitly while you're designing the controller. 
And delays could be of the order of one second, it could be of, of the order of milliseconds, it could be of the order of microseconds. So, uh, but no matter how small of a delay is, it needs to be accommodated. Of course, if your system runs at a second scale and you have a delay of one microsecond, it's too small, it's negligible. But if your system runs at microsecond scale and you have delays of microsecond, then it's a significant problem. And you want to make sure that you incorporate that uh, knowledge in your control design process. Okay. Any questions so far? Yes. Did you mean milliseconds or microseconds? So like if we have a delay of a couple of So let's say your system works at a time scale of 10 microseconds and you have a delay of one microsecond. Then it's a significant delay. Uh, if your system works at one second basis and you have a delay of one microsecond, it's negligible. Okay. So to give you an example, I talked about this car example, right? So you press some buttons on your steering wheel and that information gets to the infotainment system with a delay of 20 milliseconds, right? But our listening is at, I mean, we need to hear a sound every 15 at a, I don't want to say frequency of uh, 15 hertz, but if you have a sound signal every one by, let's say 20 seconds, we think of it as a continuous sound, okay? We don't think of it as a discrete sound, even though the actual production of signal is discrete. So 20 milliseconds is very small in comparison to this time scale. So that's why you can completely ignore it. Um, but you cannot ignore one mic microsecond or two microseconds of delay in a power electronic system, which is ensuring that you're getting 110 volt AC all the time. Okay. All right, so now we are going to do a control design problem, uh, incorporating the delays explicitly in our control design process. So this is something that you may not, you have not done before, so this is the first time when we are actually designing a controller with a delay. Uh, the other thing that, so before I jump on to that, let me just mention payday approximation. So it's a way to approximate uh, functions with polynomials and for e raised to minus st, the first order payday approximation is 1 minus st over 2 over 1 plus st over 2. Let me put that. This is the first order payday approximation. Okay, the way you get this approximation is you approximate it e raised to minus st by 1 minus st and this is equal to a1 plus b1s plus a2 plus b2s and then you try to find the coefficients a1, b1, a2, b2. That's, that gives you this expression on the right side. Okay, so this is first order payday approximation. You can use in uh, MATLAB, there is a command and you can put the order. So second order, third order, fourth order. So you can use the command payday of whatever the transfer function is and whatever approximation you want and it will give you the corresponding approximation. So this is first order payday approximation of a delay transfer function.
So if you are plotting root locus diagram, instead of using e raised to minus st, you have to use this in the transfer function because you cannot draw root locus for transfer functions that contains exponential terms. It has to be in a polynomial format for, root lo for you to be able to draw root locus. Okay. Yes. Is the one right below it, is that the second order approximation? This one? Yeah. Uh, no, it's not because it's uh, uh, so you want the numerator to be first order, you want the denominator to also be first order, and you want the right hand side to be an approximation of e raised to minus st. So, oh, maybe you can take s square t square on this side. No, I don't think so. The derivation is given in the book, uh, and I haven't really thought about the derivation, so that's why I'm not covering it in the class. But it's on page 673. You can you can take a look at it if you want to. For most uh, situations, the first order approximation is good enough to give you a, a reasonable control system. Another useful approximation is uh, the consider a second order system then zeta is approximately equal to 0.01 phase margin in degrees. Uh, and this is valid for zeta less than 0 0.7. So if you have a second order system, your zeta is 100, one phase margin over 100. And this phase margin is in degrees. So 43 degree implies zeta is approximately equal to 0 0.43. Okay. Now let's use this to design a control system for a system with delay. minus st over s plus 1 square. So design specification 1 percent overshoot should be less than equal to 10 10 percent phase margin must be greater than equal to 50 degrees So if you look at the uh, percent overshoot graph from one of the previous lectures, so percent overshoot less than 10% implies zeta 
has to be greater than 0 0.6 and face margin greater than 50 percent implies zeta must be greater than 0 0.5. Okay, so let's pick zeta, the desirable zeta to be 0 0.6 or the phase margin to be 60 degrees approximately. Can you find the uh, zeta for the phase margin? I kind of know it's greater so, than 0.5. Oh, yeah. I'm using this approximation. Oh. This is an approximation for second order system, but again, when you don't have, I mean, this is a second order system, but uh, not exactly in that format. But we are still using the same idea because it gives you an approximate value. Okay, let's plot the body plot for the system. So, this is the magnitude plot and the phase plot. This is the magnitude plot. This is my 0 dB Minus 120 degree, minus 180 degree. Where does it go to 180 degree before omega c? So I define my L of s as, well, this is for the uncompensated system. So let me write, uh, this is 20 log absolute value of g, j, omega, and this is angle of g j omega and the angle would look something like this is the angle this value is 2.8 radians per second this value is 0 0.87 radians per second Thank you. 
Oh, if you plot the Bode plot, that's what you will get. So, at 0 0.87 radians per second, your phase plot goes through minus 120 degree line. And at 2.8 radians per second, your magnitude plot goes through 0 dB line. Okay? And at 0 dB, your phase margin is minus 87 degrees. Okay? So, the closed loop system is unstable. Without any compensator, the closed loop system is unstable. Now, the goal is to design a PI controller to achieve a phase margin of around 60 degrees. Okay? Now, remember what, do, what did we know about the Bode plot? The Bode plot of multiplication of two transfer function is the sum of Bode plot of individual transfer functions. So, I want to design a PI controller. Uh, and this, I have already plotted the Bode plot of this system. So, let me plot the Bode plot of the PI controller. And then I'm going to add the two by picking an appropriate parameters for the PI controller. So, PI controller, the Bode plot looks like, so, no, yeah. So this is Ki over Kp. So let me write Gc as Kp plus Ki over S. So this is Kp S plus Ki over Kp over S. Okay. So there is a zero at Ki over minus Ki over Kp, and then there is a pole at zero. So this is Ki over Kp, this is 10 Ki over Kp, this is 0 0.1 Ki over Kp, and the phase angle, this is angle of Gc, this is 20 log absolute value of Gc. This is 0 dB, and the angle plot is, so this is 90 degrees, this is 0 degrees. Okay, so now I have drawn two body plots, one for the PI controller and one for the, sorry, this is 0 degrees and this is minus 90. Okay, now it looks good. Okay, once everyone has noted down, we will proceed with the discussion. Yes. Um, why are we adding the two graphs? Okay, so we have GC here, right? And we have G here. And when we are drawing, when we are figuring out the phase margin of the compensated system, we need to look at the Bode plot of GC multiplied by G. And then we learn that the Bode plot of multiplication of two transfer function is sum of individual Bode plots because you have log absolute value of G. So if you have G1, G2, then it becomes log of G1 plus log of G2. And the phase angle, of course, gets added for two okay. transfer functions. Yeah. Okay, so log GCG is equal to log GC plus log G and angle of GCG is angle of GC plus angle of G.
Okay. What is in our hands? In our hands, we can pick KP and KI. Those are the only two things which we can pick according to our free will. Okay, now we have everything that we needed uh, to design the controller. So first thing, we need the desired zeta to be 0 0.6, which implies we need the phase margin to be approximately 60 degrees. Okay. We look at the original system and figure out where is the phase margin of, at what omega we have a phase margin of 60 degrees. And it turns out that it is at this particular omega. Omega equals to 0 0.87. So this is where we have, uh, this is one, minus 120 degrees, so we have a phase margin of 60 degrees. Well, not phase margin, but there is a possibility of getting a phase margin of 60 degrees. But we can only do that if we can push this thing down to 0 dB. Okay, so I need to push this thing down. This is 14.5 dB. And I need to push it down to 0 dB because only then this will become the phase margin. So my desired Where do I write? Let me erase this side. So my desired crossover frequency zero dB frequency omega C to be equal to 0 0.87 radians per second. Okay. Now, now I, I, I want you guys to stop writing and listen to the rationale for designing this controller carefully. Okay, so the, reso the, the, the reason is the phase here is 60 degree, which is exactly equal to what we want. Uh, so, six, so we can get a phase margin of 60 degree if we can push this curve down to 0 dB. How do I push the curve down to 0 dB? I can do that by adding a proportional controller such that twenty log KPG is equal to zero degree at omega C. Okay. So we'll use a proportional controller to push this thing down to zero dB line. But at the same time, we don't want our I component because it adds a zero, right? So we have a PI controller. So because we have an I component, it adds a zero. So we don't want the PI controller to change the gain as well as change the phase of the system at this particular frequency. So we look at, so this is the curve for, this is the body plot for a PI controller. I can pick KI over KP as I want. It's under my control. So I will pick the value of KI over KP in such a fashion that I neither add any gain to the system, nor do I add any phase to the system, okay? Which means uh, I don't add the gain and the phase at omega C because this is the critical point in our uh, open loop system. That's where we want to make sure that everything works out. So the first thing is I want my gain to be such that at omega C I can push this curve down to 14.5 dB. So whenever you want to push a curve up or down, uh, you just use a proportional controller, you don't need anything else. But if you want to change the phase characteristics, 
as well as move it up and down, then you need a more complicated controller. And that's why we are moving to PI controller here. So the first thing is we want our 20 log KPG to be equal to zero degree at omega C. And we want 10 KI over KP to be equal to omega C. Yes? Oh, yes, of course, zero dB, thanks. Yeah, this is dB at omega C, and we want the face, we want the zero of the PI controller to be such that uh, 10 multiplied by the zero is omega C. So this would give you KP equals 10 raised to minus 14.5 over 20. That's equal to, so this 14.5 is this one. Uh, you know, I don't have time, but let me just do a full blown derivation. Okay, so this implies 20 log KP plus 20 log G J omega C equals to zero, which implies 20 log KP equals to minus 14.5 dB, because 20 log G J omega C is 14.5. And this gives you a value of KP, which is 0 0.188. Okay, and the second thing was we want 10 ki over kp to be equal to omega c. This implies ki over kp is 0 Yes? Oh, where does that second requirement come from? Yes, so we were discussing about it. So this is the critical point where we want this curve to come down to 0 dB so that my face margin becomes 60 degrees. Okay. And we need to use a PI controller for that uh, because, uh, yeah, so PI controller is already given. We need to use PI controller in this particular situation. Uh, so we want to put the, so, so each PI controller has a zero, okay? And we need to put a zero somewhere on, in, the, in zero to infinity. So I'm going to pick a point such that it doesn't add to the gain and it doesn't add to the phase. So remember this phase is zero degree, okay? And I want this point to be equal to omega c so that I neither add to the gain part and I don't add to the phase part either. So you're saying if it was just the KP, it would basically take all of that and shift it down. That's right. You want to keep the last half the same as it was before. So like half. No. Um, you cannot keep everything the same, but what you can do is make sure that nothing happens in this region, in this particular region, because that's where the gain margin and phase margin, or that's where the phase margin requirement will be met. Okay. Okay, so. No, it will be changed. Uh, oh, uh, the phase characteristics will not be changed. 
Yes, you are right. So phase characteristics will not be changed after omega c and the gain will also not be changed after omega c, but it will change everything before omega c. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so the important thing to note here is in order to move the curve up and down, in order to meet the zero dB requirement, you have to use a proportional controller and that gives us the value of Kp here. And in order to make sure we don't really change the angle characteristic, the phase characteristic, as well as the gain characteristic at this particular location, we want our, we want to pick om Ki over Kp in such a fashion that we add zero dB to the gain part and zero degrees to the phase part. And that's why omega C was taken to be equal to 10 Ki over Kp. You can take it 11, 12, 13, 15 Ki over Kp, that, that's completely fine. This is just one way to figure out what Ki over Kp is. But you are free to pick 15 Ki over Kp to be equal to omega C or 20 or 50 or 100, right? But not 5 or not 1. Okay, so this is PI controller design. In the subsequent classes, we are going to talk about lead controller and lag controller and show how to change the phase characteristics as well as gain characteristics by an appropriate design of controllers. And after that, we'll talk about cascaded controllers where you have a PI, then a lead, then a lag compensator, and how that changes the overall system behavior. So now we are going very deep into the control design task. And that's the reason why we are taking 3551, so. <laughs>